Good. Good. Then have a photo. Good evening to all. How many of you are first timers in this place? The, the first time you have attended this place? One, how are you, brother? Two, three. Okay, we have handsome brothers today. Welcome back. It is our joy that uh, we, uh, we uh, you know, in the family, we welcome you in the family. And we know that it is not an accident that God brought you here today. Because it's very uh, important message for you and to all of us here. And uh, of course, how are you po, mga kapatid? Blessed? Yes. 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 So, oh, Brother Andrew, you're here, you're back. <laughs> okay, so, earlier we were, we were singing King of Glory, we were singing uh, Glory Belongs to God, and now we deserve all the glory. Do we really understand the meaning of the word glory? When you say glory to you, Lord, oh, when someone when someone uh, praise you, then you will say, to "God be the glory." But it is good. But we need to understand more the meaning of glory. So today, oh, I'm gonna talk in. Praise God. <coughs> So today we're going to be uh, expounding or seek more the meaning of glory so that we will be able to really worship God according to who He is and according to what is due to Him. Alright. Okay, so when we talk about the glory, of course we have to define first what is glory and then we will... Uh, share also later what do you mean by the glory of God and how do we glorify God and what is the glory of man the glory of God and how did Jesus regain the glory that was lost from man so when we talk about glory that means in Hebrew that means kabod hindi kabod kabod you say kabod. kabod. I don't know if it's kabod or kabod, but it's kabod. So, Hebrew word for glory means kabod or weight. I didn't mention the weight. Have you heard? When we say the weight, you value, you worthiness, the weight, the, the glory. Yun ang ibig sabihin nun. At pag sinabing weight, ito yung totality, yung, yung, uh, how do you say that? The worthiness of, when we talk about the glory of God, of who He is, the essence, the beauty, the splendor, His character, His way, the way we got. Have you heard of the word ikabod? Have you heard ikabod, right? It's very familiar, ikabod. It's biblical. There was a story in in First Samuel where you know the wife of Phinehas or the sons of Eli. Eli is the priest. He's got two sons who is not really doing. Uh, he's doing uh, evil things in the in the presence of God. And there was a time when the tabernacle or the ark of the covenant was uh stolen or was defeated you know the, the israelites was defeated by the uh what they call this the, the palestine and then the ark of the covenant was was uh, uh taken from them and when the wife of penenas she was she was pregnant when she heard about the loss or i say that the, the covenant was was uh, taken away from by the enemies and that with that battle, his two, uh, his husband and his father died, and his the husband died, and the brother-in-law died. 
And this she gave birth because of that pain, because of that burden. And now death, the son, was given the name Ichabod. The meaning of Ichabod is that the glory has departed from Israel. Ichabod. So when you say Kabod, it's the glory. Ichabod, it departed. It left the glory. The glory left from the people of God, the people of God, which was the Israelites' people. Now, so greatness, the glory of God is the greatness or of splendor. Wala na monitor. Wala pa lang. Puti nga may screen pa lang ngayon. Okay. Greatness of splendor, meaning to say when we talk about the glory of God, God's glory, again, is the essence of His nature. Yun. Yun pala. The nature, the essence of His nature. It is the beauty of His spirit. The beauty of His spirit, it is not the type of beauty that is passing, the material beauty, but it emanates or flow from his character. From all that he is. Everything who God is, when it is being displayed, when it is being manifested, that's his glory. The glory of God is coming out from his nature, displayed to be seen by men, this is the glory of God. Are you getting this? Yes. The way, the glory, the, the essence of His nature. It is the beauty of His Spirit. Take note of that. Say, beauty of His Spirit. Beauty of His Spirit. Beauty of His Spirit. Of his spirit. Thank you very much for seven people. Who... Can you say, beauty of His Spirit. Beauty of His Spirit. That's better. Because everything here is about the beauty of the Spirit of God. When we talk about the glory, it is in the Spirit of God. Now, in Psalms 19, it describes Psalms 19 verses 1 to 4. It says there, the heavens, because many people, we have people who doesn't believe God. They say that God doesn't exist. God is not real. And that heaven and earth is, you know, hell is already here. Have you heard of that? They're saying that hell, this is life. Life is hell. And there's no heaven, there's no God. But this book of Psalms tells us that the heavens, you see it's plural, there are many heavens. The heavens are telling of the glory. Telling of the glory of God and their expanse or their their uh, uh, beauty, declaring as if saying, declaring, telling, declaring the work of the of the of the work of God of His hands. Day unto day utter speech. The Bible is telling us: if you don't believe, look around you. Because the glory of God is being displayed. Day unto day, they utter speech as if talking to us, God is real. Amen. <clears throat> the heavenly host, the heavenlies, is not from the Big Bang. <laughs> God created all these things. Day unto day, utter speech, and night unto night, reveals knowledge. They speak without a sound or word. I, and I underline telling, declaring, utter, speak as if someone is telling, but there's no sound. It is telling us, it's trying to communicate to us without a sound. It's only uh, the visual thing, the manifestation of the glory of God. So he said, they speak without a sound or word. Their voice is never heard. Yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world. We can never deny that God is the creator of heaven and earth because everything that we see declares the glory of God, declares that God created everything. You see the size of one star? 
I don't know the exact size, but this is more than enough to destroy the earth. And the Bible says the breath, the breath of the Almighty are fire and stars and moons. He breathed and they were created. That's how big God is. The universe He created by His hands. That's why we need to understand now the glory of God, the, the one we are worshiping here, is the one who is the creator of all these things, of even us, our creator. Okay, have you heard of Shekinah glory? Shekinah, Shekinah, Shekinah. It's also called, in Hebrew, Shekinah glory, meaning He caused to dwell. He caused to dwell, it is a divine visitation of the presence or dwelling of the Lord God on earth. Pag sinabi mo siya, kind of glory, mayroong presence ng Lord. The, you know, remember the time when the Israelites people were being led outside Egypt, when they were about to cross, you know, the, uh, the Red Sea. You know, there was a cloud and a fire that was guiding them. And it's called the presence of God. That is, in the Old Testament, you can find several stories that the manifestation of God's glory was there. The, the Israelites people were led by a cloud by day. By day, there is a cloud leading them, and by night, it's a fire. By night, in a pillar of fire and a pillar of cloud. You understand? In those times, during the time of Moses, when they were trying to uh, exit or the exodus from Egypt, there is no diva. <laughs> it's very dark. The presence of God helped them through the by a pillar of fire in the evening that sustains the, the light from the Israelites' people and the cloud by day. Signifying the Shekinah glory, the presence, the dwelling of God on that place that are in the presence of the people. That means Shekinah. Even the stories of Solomon when they built the tabernacle, the, the temple of Jerusalem, when they were about to, to uh, conduct the, the uh, worship, Solomon cannot enter, the priest cannot enter the place because it was filled with Shekinah glory, the clouds. Referring to the presence of God. And sometimes when we are worshiping, sometimes we, we don't understand what we feel. Because God is touching, God is stealing the heart, and then you cry. We, we feel something that makes us cry. There's an emotion because the presence of God is like embracing us. It's your kind of glory. The presence of God that dwells. That's in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, the New Testament, it's different because Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus, is the dwelling place of God's glory. Jesus, when Jesus came, He was the demonstration, He was the display of God's glory. What did Jesus do? He healed the sick. He made the lame walk. He raised the dead. He made the blind see. He helped the poor. He is the friend of the tax collector, the, the friend of the sinners. The goodness of the Father was demonstrated through Jesus Christ. The Shekinah glory in the time, in our time now, during the time when Jesus was here, it was in the presence of Jesus, the manifestation of So Jesus is the visible manifestation of God on earth. Are we still friends? Amen. English <laughs> Okay. I think the Lord also wanted us to understand our purpose. Who created us? How did how were we created? Because sometimes, you know, there was a time before I came to know the Lord that as if there's no purpose in life, as if there's no direction. Every day the same. Routine. You sleep, you eat, you work, then you sleep again, you eat. As if that's the only life that I know. But when I came to know the Lord, then I discovered my purpose. 
I discovered the plan of God in my life. And today, the Lord wanted us also to understand more how or what is the purpose of our life? Why do we exist? Why are we here? Why were we born in this world? First of all, who created you? Who created you? Can you ask your sitmate? You know? So the weight of his glory in Isaiah 42 verse 5 says, can you please read? I am the Lord God, 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 I am this is the God that we serve. He is the source of life. He is the one creating, not the one being created. You know, we don't worship things because the God, the true God, is in heaven and throne in heaven. Amen. He's the only God. We cannot worship something that is material or physical because He is the source of life. Is that thing that you are worshiping the source of your life? No. You don't need to answer. But open your mind. Because so many people are worshipping so many things in many forms. And even without our knowledge, sometimes we worship things, or your cars, or your partners, or your anything that is greater. That, that you put value greater than God, you're worshipping your, it's idolatry. That you call it idolatry. It's not it's not about the image alone. It is about the people, the place, or the things that you honor more than God. That you put first above God. You are practicing idolatry. Brothers and sisters, they're not here. Facebook, Facebook. Hallelujah. So, God is the source of life for all who live on this earth. So next time that you worship, ask yourself, is this thing I'm worshiping is the source of life for all who live on the earth? Can this thing create man? Can this thing create animals? Can this thing create heaven, the stars, the moon? Because if he is the one who creates this, he deserves to be worshipped. And there's only one who have created the heavens. He is the source of life for all who lives here on earth. That is our God. Amen. Amen. Can we give him a cup of rain? <laughs> who created you? The Bible will tell us. You are worthy, O oh God. In Revelation chapter 4, you are worthy, O oh God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things. You created all things and by your will, by your will, they were created. You know what? When you came here or you came into the world, it was the will of God. Amen. He is pleased to create you. Yeah. Tell your sinmate, God is pleased to create you. And that, the, that's the God who said he, he is the creator of all things. And by his will you are created. Now you know you're, that you were created by God. And if he is your creator, 
then you don't own your life. The Creator owns your life, isn't it? Because He created you, so you don't own anything. He created you. He is the Creator. Who created you? Or by Him again? Another verse. What's the purpose of everything? But why did He create you? What was all this about? Why are we here? Again, last last week we were talking about. On the topic, nothing. Yeah. 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 Seventy, eighty, ninety. You say one hundred, hundred years old. You leave here. Then what? Then what? Then we pass away. Maximum one hundred twenty-five. If you're that strong, one hundred twenty-five, and then people dies. But during our lifetime. One, one preacher said, there is a place that is filled with treasure. There is only one place that is full of treasure and, and wisdom and everything. Do you know where is this? Do you know that place? I gotta read it. May isang lugar kung saan ang doon ang wisdom, ang doon ang treasure Precious people. You know where it is? The old source daily bag. It's in the, the graveyard. One preacher saying, "Ang pinaka potential na mga tao na matay na na hindi na laman who they are, what are their purpose in life. The grave took them without even knowing what they have." This is the place where brilliance, wisdom was stored now. People died without knowing their purpose. People died without even knowing why God created them. And today God doesn't want us to be ignorant of His plan for all of us. Amen. For all things were created through Him and for Him. Again, the Bible says, all things, including anything. But sinabi all, is there any exemption? No. It's all for Him. Not for you. For Him. Regardless of what for, it's for Him. All creation is for Him. Wala kang pag-aari. We are the steward of the things of God here. Of our life, of everything that we have. Ang sa Tagalog niyan? Ah, pa... Nagapangalagat ka lang. You know, when you are the manager, you're not the owner. You are the caretaker, you are the manager, you look after these things and then you report to your owner. Nato. 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 So that's who we are. We are just the poor of the things that God has given you, given me, given us. And one day He said, You will give account of everything that you have. You will give account of what have you done to those things that He has entrusted us. Why did God create us? Why did God create us? You know, when God created man, when God creates something, it's not because He needs something. Because God is already God. Whether you are here or you are not here or here, you mean if you exist or don't exist, God remains God. But He created things for His pleasure. He created things because God is... Uh, Ang kanyang workmanship, he is a lover of beautiful things, the art and everything, and the and the first class na kanyang kreatin ay ang tao. Among his creation, he gave weight to the people. When he created the animals, the trees, the the birds, the 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 heavens, the water, he just spoke. But when he created man. He breathed into his nostrils. When he created us, he personally 
breathed into his to our nostril and we became a living being. That's how important we are. You see, he created us for his pleasure so that we as his creation would have the pleasure of knowing him. That's your purpose. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You know the purpose? God wanted to reveal himself to you, for you to know him, for God to enjoy his creation, and his creation enjoy God. A fellowship, a family. A relationship. So without knowing God, without knowing anything about His Word, how can we fellowship with Him? That's why God is saying, you're no longer a slave. You're no longer outsider. But you are friends. You know the meaning of friends? Sometimes friends know more than your family. Who you are. Isn't it? Sometimes you, 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 you uh, reveal them more special things, important things, more than sometimes to your household. Because friends, you don't keep secrets. Friends, they accept you. Jesus is calling you. You are my friend. They call us friends. Tell your secret. You're a friend of God. You're a friend of God. You're a friend of God. Now, the main purpose why we are living, the main purpose why we were created, why we exist, is found in Isaiah 43, verse 7. Can we please read this? The purpose of this life that we have now is to give glory to God. When we say, what do we mean? We give glory to God. We have to understand how do we give glory to Him. Ipo ba? Yung palang purpose mo now, if you understand giving glory or giving glory to God means, then you have a direction now. Because people are lost. We were lost. Now we were found by Jesus. Amen. Now he's telling us your purpose, number one step, is you have, you are created, you were formed by God to give glory to Him. Do you know what? The glory of God, He shared it to man. God's glory can be seen in things such as love, music, Heroism and so forth, things belonging to God that we are carrying in jars of clay. Do you understand that? Let me explain that. So, the, 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 not really the totality, but part of God's glory can be seen in the life of man. Sabi Jaan, sometimes music, when you say, wow, this is great music, glory to God. You Sometimes you compose a beautiful song. Then you say, you give glory to God. That means when you created this, you give thanks because He's the one who gave you the skills and the talent to form this music, to compose this music. So your life is giving glory. You're giving glory to God when you display or when you acknowledge the glory of God in your life. Heroism, so forth. I'm not even going to but you see in Facebook, there's so many stories that we can find. A blind man being helped, a poor man being helped, an old man being assisted, and you say, glory to God. God bless this man. When someone is doing good, when someone is, is helping, is displaying the essence and the nature of God, that person is giving glory to God. You understand what? Kaya tinawag tayong jars of clay. Why jars of clay? Because He's the potter and we are the clay. He forms, 
His, his, his formation, we are the one who represent God here on earth. Hallelujah. Let, let me go on. See, Psalm 8, look at this, people. Your purpose is to give glory to God. And you know what God did? God, with His glory and glorious uh, splendor and, and, and majestic character and nature, He chose to share the glory to men. The angel, you know what? When, when God created, church, when God created heaven and earth in the history of creation, when he said, let there be light, let there be expanse in the universe, and there was light, and it was God, it was created. But when he created man, Genesis 1, 26, he made sure that all the creation were listening, he was declaring, let us make man in our image. Let him let them have dominion to rule. If the fish was given the capacity to be to live on water, that's this nature. But you know the nature of men. What is man? The angels were asking, they know about the heavens, the earth, the moon, the stars, but it was very uh, it was something new to them that when God created man, when he created Adam and Eve, he was visiting them. Every day he was fellowshipping with men. So the angels were asking, can read that? What is man that you are mindful of him? What is man that you visit him? This is how God loves man. What is man you are mindful of him? The son of man that you visit him. For you have made him a little lower than the angels and you have grown. In other translation, these angels in Hebrew is called Elohim, not angels. So uh, I think you, you should check the other translation. It should be Elohim. He made man a little lower than Elohim. Elohim means plural of God. El, Eli is God. Elohim, the Trinity. Imagine the position, God, little lower than God, aakala natin, God, Archangel, Angel. Isn't it? God, the position, God, Archangel, and the angels. But he's saying here, he made him a little lower than God. In insert time, we are greater even than the Archangels. Amen. The Bible says we are even going to judge the angels. What is meant that you are mindful of him? You crowned him with glory and honor. You crowned men. He crowned us with glory and honor. And you made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. And you put all things under his feet. If you are clapping, that means you are now acknowledging who you are. Amen. This is so heavy. This is big thing, big, big time. You have put all things under his feet. Dominion to rule. If the fish is to swim, the animals is to do things, man is made to rule. The nature of man is to have dominion and to rule. And you know what? Not to domi not dominion over men, husbands, not dominion over your wife, and wives, not dominion over your husbands. <laughs> but when you say dominions over the fish of the sea, the creeping things in the world, that is what we are, now our purpose is to have dominion. And we were crowned, pagsinabi po crowned, with glory. This is not the same glory that God has, but God shared it with men. The glory that comes from God, He shared it with men. Church. This is who we are. The creation of men. 
and the of God. So this glory crowned men or fill the earth, the glory of men is the beauty of man's spirit. Earlier we said the glory of God is the beauty in his spirit. The glory of man is the beauty of man's spirit. Nagigess niya kung saan tayo pupunta? The beauty of man it, it, it is in his spirit. We have spirit, soul, and body. But it is in his spirit that will flow to your soul and to your body. That's the glory of God. The glory of man. Which is, this type of glory is fallible, meaning in the eternal, it passes away. And is therefore humiliating. The Bible says, you, the glory of, uh, but the glory of God, later I will explain this, but the glory of God which is manifested in all His attributes together never passes away. It is eternal. Amen. So the glory of man is just temporary, means it was only allowed by God to be experienced by man, but it will pass away. Why? <coughs> it is within man, this glory is within man and in the earth, but it is not of them, it is of God. Ibig po sabihin, we were now, uh, how do you say that, uh, empowered or kinagawin kinagawin? Huh? Installed. We were installed with the glory of God in us. So that we will display this glory on the earth. Paano ko ba ito sasabihin, Lord? Naintindan niyo po? Ang purpose ng tao pala, ang buhay mo, every day that you live, every day of your life, when you display the glory of God through your life, this is the term that we are giving glory to God. Amen. If you are given the glory, you are expected to display it. Kaya pala sometimes, it's installed in our in our hearts, may goodness ka lagi. Kahit minsan, nakakagawa ka ng something, but it's nature mo na gumawa ng mabuti. Nandiyan eh. Nalalandaman niyo po. Okay, let me just uh, finish this one. They do not know that they, they understand. They walk about in darkness. You know why? This is what the Bible is saying. Psalms 82. This is who man is, but man doesn't know who he is. Because they walk in darkness, all the foundations of the earth are unstable. And he said, you are gods. Church, check your Bible. The Bible calls us, you are gods. Not in the sense of divinity, because it is small gods. Gods because of rulership, because of dominion here on earth. We are even called gods, a little lower than Elohim. You are gods. That's who we are. And if we're acting away from our nature, that's the problem. Something happened. All of you are children of the Most High. Psalms 82. You are God. Sabi mo nga, you are God. You are God. Small God, ha? Hindi yung mas kapantay ka ng mga God. You are God in the sense here of the earth. See, today, we are the vessels which contain can, can you all read this one? We are the vessels which contain His glory. All the things we are able to do and to find their source in Him. God interacts with nature in the same way. Nature exhibits His glory. His glory is revealed to man's mind through the material world in many ways and often in different ways to different people. Diba tama? Sometimes when we come to one place, the falls, the, the, the majestic beauty that we see, the nature, we always say, oh God, you are very good. Isn't it? When we see the nature and we, when we see beautiful things, we always relate it to the goodness of God or the, the power of God. God, this is your workmanship. And the Bible tells us, the glory of God flows to us. The nature of God flows to us. Like jars. Ikaw yung nagde-demonstrate dito sa lupa ng kanyang karakter, ng kanyang nature. That's, that's what our purpose is. 
But something happened. That's why we have to understand. We were given this glory. We were given all this dominion and something happened. You, we understand. Some of you already understand it. But for the sake of those who have not yet heard of this uh, uh, biblical truth, the fall of man during the history of creation when Adam and Eve disobeyed God and they chose to believe the serpent and they took the fruits from the knowledge of good and evil which God forbids them to take or to eat. They disobeyed God and then the glory departed. Ikabon. That's the meaning of the death of the spirit. Spiritual death. The glory of God departs from men. The spirit. Nana, correct on side, Nipo? Yes. When that happened, that disobedience, the, the, the Bible says, through one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Through one man, that man is Adam. When Adam committed disobedience, we inherited the nature of disobedience. We were called the sons of disobedience. The glory departed. And that's why the Bible says, but through the obedience of one man, many were made righteous. Because Jesus came to bring back Amen. that glory to man. So Romans 3.23, we fall for all of the city to fall short of the glory of God. Amen. For all have sinned because even you have not yet committed individual sins, the Bible calls you sinner. Sabi ni Solomon, in my mother's womb, I am already called sinful. He has not, your nature is already sinful because of the source, Adam. We inherited sinful nature. All people, descendants of Adam, are all called sinful with sinful nature. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The glory departed. The glory departed. And another thing, every time you, you notice this, every time that we try to share the gospel, we try to evangelize, we try to ask people to draw people to God, they cannot see the goodness of the gospel. It's very difficult for them to understand what we want them to have. They thought that it's going to kill their joy. That their joy will end, their happiness will end, their life will end. Bo born again? Mag sasayaw sayaw, kakanta kanta sa Lord? Badui. This is how we receive. These people, they cry sometimes, they cry, then later on they will laugh. They will cry again, they will laugh. Crazy. <laughs> We think they are doing something. My deference in the diferencia. You know why? People? Why can't they see the, the, the gospel? Because someone is blinding the mind. Who's mind? The God of this age. Who is the God of this age? Satan. He's called the God of this age because the God of this age. Because when the Lord departed, when God, the plan of God to have man to have dominion over the, the, the earth, it was illegally taken by the demon, by, by Satan. Then the glory of God departed on man. He took the world. He took the, that's why he was called now the God of this age or the God of this world or the prince of the air. It's all talking about Satan in the Bible. He is now the God of this world. Controlad niya ang mind ng mga tao. Because people are blinded. <coughs> has blinded. Who do not believe? Lest the light of the gospel and the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. <coughs> you are blessed because now you, the light is shining in your life. Na understand mo ngayon ang katotohanan, the truth. Isn't it? When we came to know the Lord, that's the only time we understood life. Maybe hindi pa sa iba. Now you're starting. God has a plan for us to discover His plan. Kung ano yung minigay niya sa atin. And there is someone who is blinding the mind. Kaya maging patience naman kayo pag naging alive. 
Hindi na tawagan ko si The Switch. Oh, bahala pa sa buhay niya. Diba? Minsan wala ka ng patience. Let them... Let, let's understand that there is a blindness. You know, the blindness, he doesn't allow... If you blindness no man, he didn't see the beauty, he didn't see the goodness, he didn't see the benefit, he didn't see the good things that God has prepared. With blindness. In everything, hindi niya tayo. Nandito na aalis pa. They cannot even stand to listen to the word of God. There is blindness. So this is what happened to man. Fall short of the glory of God, and there is blindness. See? Yung, yung kanina, let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation, because as a flower of the field he will pass away. The glory, this flower again that we're talking about, I've discussed the, last week, we are described or we are compared to a flower. Because the life of a flower will fade, will pass away. That time that Adam disobeyed God, para tayong, it is compared to a garden of flowers or garden of flowers called a garden. We represent, we are symbolizing, flower symbolizes a, a life of a person. And when Adam, uh, what do you call this, disobeyed God, he died spiritually. It is, that's what affect, affected us. We, we were picked up from the garden. A flower who is full of beauty, but when he was picked up from the garden, something died. Spiritually, a, a person, a human being died. And that death was spiritual, but that death produces a physical death in us. Kaya yung bulakla, pag pinitas mo, it will stay for maybe one week, depending on how you, uh, you know, like you water it, you, you, you uh, take care of it. It will last the beauty that hanggang one day you will see it, it withers, it fades away, it dies. This is what the Bible is telling us. Be our lives like a flower. One day, whether you like it or not, we will pass away because of that effect of the spiritual death that happened in the Garden of Eden. That's why we are all going to die. Hello? <laughs> okay. Second uh, question. And this is the plan of God. For God, who said, let there be light in the darkness. This is the will of God. Namawala yung blindness ng tao sa mind natin. Who has made this light shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. The glory can be seen again through Jesus Christ. And he said, we now have this light. Brothers and sisters, tell me it made. When you receive Jesus, you got this light again. We have this light now shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars. You kanina. Containing this great treasure. Yung buhay natin, nandoon lang yung great treasure yung nasa buhay natin. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. We understand that God wanted us to know, to, 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 re to reveal to us this light, this blindness is gone. Because when we came to know Jesus, the light shone in our hearts. Amen. Amen. So is a human view, glory is a beauty or vibrancy that rests upon the material of the earth. It fades. But the wicked, the, the Bible says, Psalms 49, Psalms 37, the wicked will die. The Lord's enemies are like flowers in the field. They will disappear like smoke. The wicked borrow and never repay. But the godly are generous givers. The godly are generous. For when they die, they take nothing with them. Their wealth will not follow them into the grave. Sometimes we put so much weight on the things here on earth, on material things, on the things that we see. Our mind is focused. Hindi naman po masama maging mayaman. Hindi po masama na magkaroon ng mga material things. But when your focus 
Because when your priority is already focused on that thing, that makes it wrong. Because these things will pass away. These things will fade. It, we cannot follow them into the grave. Mamamatay ka, maiiwan. Hindi mo na alam kung sino makikinabang ng mga pinagpaguran. Pag-ahawayan ka. Sana hindi mawagutan ang pag-ahawayan. You see, people are so busy. So busy. And this is one of the tactics ng kalaban. He makes us people, he makes the people busy. Busy with so many things. So many things. They have so much ideas that people are so busy with that they neglect God to give glory to God, to, to do the purpose of His life. And that is to bring out the nature, the beauty, the essence of God into earth. Hallelujah. What happened? Okay. So, the exchange is what exactly happened and this is what Romans 1 they exchange the glory of God in favor of the glory of men. This is actually what God is trying to tell us in the Bible. Man chose man over God. Man chose things over God. <coughs> he said, okay, before this one, this is Romans 1, 21 to 23, verse 25. Yes, the Bible said, they knew God. They know there is God. They knew God. Even if you say there's no God, you know there's God. The atheists may say, I don't believe in God, there's no God. In their hearts, they know God. Because the Bible said, they know God. They know no matter how uh, they, they refuse or they say they don't know God. They know God. They know God, but they wouldn't worship Him as God or even give Him thanks. At least we start with giving thanks to the Lord. When we wake up with everything that we do, let's give thanks to Him. Amen. Because it is due to Him. Amen. And they began to think of foolish ideas of what God was like. You know why there's so many religion? You know why so many many people are trying to, to figure out God? That's why they created so many divisions, so many religions. Why? Because they, their minds are full of ideas of what God Because in each man's heart, there is the emptiness of God. Because we were created in the image of God. Every human being, they long to know God. Nilagyan siya ng Lord. We were created in the image, remember? We were created in the image of God. No matter what you do, one day you will feel so empty without God. Without Jesus, it's like a vacuum space that will fill that space in your heart. When you find Jesus, you are you met that uh, you, the feeling that is, that is needed in your heart. That's what whatever we do. Sometimes I've, I've heard one testimony of one famous actress. He said she got the fame, she got the money, she got cars. But at, at evening, at night, she's crying. She feels empty because all material things can never fill up the needs of men. Because only in Jesus Christ Amen. we can find Amen. true life. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. Claiming to be wise. They instead became utter fools. And instead of worshiping the glorious, ever-living God, they worship idols. Idols made to look like mere people. And birds and animals and reptiles, this is what they worship. Looks like mere people, birds, animals, reptiles. They traded the truth of, about God for a lie. All these are deception and lies. When we are worshiping something that is not the true God, you are having a deceiving spirit. You are deceived. They traded the truth. <laughs> so they worship and serve the things God. Look at this. 
vehicle. They worship. They worship and serve the things God created instead of the Creator. They are worshiping the creation rather than the Creator. Tuwang tuwa. Minsan sa tao na tutuwa, hindi sa Diyos. This is who man is. The Bible is always right. They exchange the glory of God to the glory of man. They prefer man over God. They prefer the creation rather than the creator. Without the understanding. So, that's why God warned. There is jealousy over the glory of God. God said, I am the Lord that is my name. I will not give my glory to another or my praise to idols. You know why? The Bible says God is a jealous God. He is a jealous God. In, in Exodus and Deuteronomy, you will find there, this is the only commandment. The idolatry will punish. Listen to this. Idolatry will punish even to the third and fourth generation of your household. Sometimes we don't understand why some, some sicknesses or tragedy, whatever, and time that, that happens to our, to our household, it's because of the history of idolatry in our family. You have to search, you have to check the generational curses. When a father worship and idols, it affects to the third and fourth generation until it is cut when someone finds Jesus in his life. That's why we are blessed because we found the red Jesus. Amen. This is exactly what the devil wanted us to lose. You know, he doesn't want us to understand because he can easily, he can freely inflict sickness, inflict tragedy, inflict any accidents in our life. Poverty, all this, they, they, they steal the peace of mind, they kill, they destroy relationships. Without God, we cannot understand. And that's why God wanted us to gather and fellowship. It's not for Him, it's for us. For us to grow in the knowledge of His Son. Because when we grow in the knowledge of His Son, we get wisdom, we get the nature, we understand His glory, and we display the glory, and many more people will be drawn to God through your lives. Amen. So the mistake of people is, is trusting in earthly things, earthly relationships, trusting their own powers or talents or beauty or the goodness they see in others. Must believe ba sila? Kaya nga po the Lord say, I am a jealous God. I will not give my glory to anyone. Why? He's the creator and then you're giving them to somebody else. What all we need to realize is that God's glory is constant. And as we journey through life, we will see it manifest here and there in this person or that forest or in a story of love or heroism, fiction or non-fiction or our own personal lives. But it all goes back to God in the end. After that, we all die and the glory goes back to God. But while we are alive, God gave us the privilege, God gave us the opportunity to display His glory, to display His essences and His nature. If we understand and we know Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. One good news about it is that Jesus, when he was crucified on the cross, he regained that glory for man. He brought, he brought that glory back to man. The one who was the was departed, the Ichabod, now is Kabod in man. The glory now was regained through the sacrifice of one life that is the life of Jesus on the cross. The finished work of Jesus on the cross gave us back the dominion, the rulership, the glory that was given to man. Amen. Hallelujah. 4, 6, for it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Only in Jesus Christ we can find this glory, this, this understanding, this light that the Bible is talking about. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not 
the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the age is for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for they had known they would not have crucified. Actually, you know, the crucifixion, the death of Christ on the cross, the paglalangan ng demonyo. Because that was the payment. That's why it was called the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That shedding of the blood of Jesus paid the sins of man. The nature was, was, that was taken, that was inherited from Adam. He brought it back. And that was why he needed to die on the cross. Because his blood is the payment for that glory. For that dominion. For that spirit to return. The spirit where the beauty of the glory resides. We receive that new spirit. That is why we are called the born again. It's Amen. about receiving the rebirth of our spirit. Amen. And the spirit where resides our glory. <clears throat> when we have the spirit of Jesus Christ in us. Amen. We can display his glory. We can give glory to God through our lives. Colossians 1.26. You see? It's all. That's why now I reconcile why he was using glory, glory, glory. The mystery. Hindi natin ko alam before this one's mystery. Now it's being revealed. The mystery that which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them, God will be to the Jews to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery. Kung ano yung nilag, uh, binig, uh, what they call this, inihanda niya para sa mga tao. Gusto malaman to ng Diyos. Gusto, mo, gusto niyang malaman mo to. The riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Now, the Bible is telling us, is revealing to you, the, the good news is that this glory, that Christ is in you, the hope of glory. Jesus, Amen. when he died on the cross, it was for the justification of all mankind. And that spirit, when you recognize, when you acknowledge Jesus as your Savior and Lord, that Christ is now in you. He gave you a new spirit. Now you have the hope. You have the hope of glory. And those who have the hope of glory in the end, he says, he will glorify the end result of this. Even if we die in the physical, we will receive a glorified body and that glorified body will be glorious in the presence of God together. We will eternally with God forever. Amen. Hallelujah. And the only way to God is through His Son, Jesus Christ. We will find the very source of all beauty in Him. In heaven, if we are in Christ, nothing will be lost to us all those things that faded in life, we will find again in Him. Second Corinthians 3, 18, but we all see this is being, not, not overnight you can regain all the glory, from glory to glory. But we all with unveiled face, dati, nakatakip blinded, ngayon, tinatanggal na yung veil, na nakikita mo na, you can see now, Beholding us in the mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same in image. <clears throat> Meaning to say, the more that we spend time, the more that we fellowship, the more that we read the Bible, the more that we spend time with God, we can we are getting the image back from glory to glory. The image returns from glory to glory to us by the Spirit of the Lord, by the Spirit of the Lord. Hindi na niyo po ang ibig sabihin nito. Gusto ng Diyos na ma-regain natin ulit yung kanyang original plan for men. Amen. To have glory, to have dominion, to have rulership. And glory to glory, trinatrabaho niya tayo. That's why be patient. This is just a journey. Church. Without the church, we can no longer find this. Hindi na niyo po. Amen. What I'm trying to appeal to you, brothers and sisters, this church that was given by God. You, do you know why? Kahit saan ko ang my church. Kahit saan na lang, may tumutubong church. Why? Because God, it is His will 
na malaman ng tao ang kanyang plano. That's why he's using churches as instrument to know the truth about God. This is not about religion, it's about God. There is only God, there is no religion. Religion is Jesus Christ. The true essence of God is found in Jesus Christ. He wanted us to understand. He gave us church, He gave us brothers and sisters for us to join together and discover the beauty, the, the glory that was lost. When you are in a church, be blessed because that church is being used to you in your life to discover back the lost glory of man. why we're doing this we are practicing goodness we are practicing giving we are practicing character building because we are regaining the glory nagre-reklamo ka ganun talaga kasi dati nga ikabod but God is trying to tell you Christ is ready in you we need to practice we need to reverse the glory of God how do you glorify God? I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Okay. See, ascribe to the Lord. How do you give glory? Ascribe to the Lord of families of nations. You see, fathers? Na una, families to ascribe glory to God. Ikaw ang hari ng pamamahay mo. The fathers are the one who is the builders, the foundation of a home. Ascribe to the Lord of families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength as Christ the Lord the glory Jew his name bring an offering Amen. and come before him worship the Lord in the splendor of his glory without understanding who God is without understanding the glory of the glory of the, the weight of God the, the beauty of his nature we cannot do all these things how can we ascribe what is due to him we don't even know we don't even know him we don't even have a relationship with him. We have no idea who he is. We thought that we were, you know, we, we came alive and then we were going to die. That's it. But God has a big plan for men. So he said, two things. Families, ascribe or give glory, worship God. Number two, bring an offering, come before him. You see, it is a practice of bringing, why bring offering? What is this type of offering that he's talking here? It's not only financial or material. No. It involves agreement. Agreement with the word. Obedience to the word. Submission to the word. This is how we can give glory to God. Church, this is why as we journey, as we walk, let us help each other to attain all this. Rehearsing His attributes or extolling Him, exalting Him, extolling Him. That's why in the church we worship, we, we do things, we have God is trying to mold us in a way of being Christ-like time. Because this is the nature. This is the plan of God. So, it doesn't only, when you say, bring an offering to God, it includes everything. Why do you have to offer? Because He is the Creator. He is God. He gave you so much. He gave you His life. He gave you His breath. Every day that we are receiving is coming from Him. It is just right to give Him. Amen. You give the glory back to Him. Amen. Hallelujah. And the first thing is that the vision He said, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is your spiritual worship. When you transform your lives, that is the spiritual worship that we can offer to the Lord. Kaya nga po, isa lang makinig, dalawa lang makinig, hanggang may buhay na nababago, that is a glory to God. Amen. Kung hindi mo naiindin yan, lalo kang magstay, Lalo kang mag-aral. Because those who receive, those who submit, and those who agree will, you know, mas magpapabilis ang paglago at pag pagkakilala sa Panginoon. Hallelujah. Please explain to Mark. Ay, <laughs> so, church is not rehearsing His attributes here. We are practicing His attributes of God. Kaya minsan, ano ba yan? Let's see. 
Can I speak in Tagalog? Just, kanina pa pala ako lagi. Dikon, please explain. He's from UK, so it's... John. You like that? Karapa. Okay. Alam niyo po ba, pagpumasok kayo sa church, wala pong karpet ng church. Amen. Huwag kang maghanap ng karpet ng church. Why? Kasi ang church are full of imperfect people. Amen. Please lang kung ang church na imperfecto, huwag ka nang pumunta. Kasi pag pumunta ka, nagiging imperfect. What I mean to say is that this is a hospital of people. You know, we were all damaged people. One day we were destroyed. Everyone fell short to the glory of God. God brought us all here to heal, to grow, to be molded, to be repaired, to be overhauled. Satan is the father of all lies. Sabi ni Ives, kanino ka mana? Kay God natin. God the Father. Amen! That's why Jesus said, if you love me, obey me. Because only through our lifestyle will we display the glory that was given to us. We were crowned with glory and honor. And when we display it, we're giving glory to Him. So listening and agreeing with Him is not enough. Today you listen. 
When you go out, don't, you know, let it pass on the other side. Meditate on the Word of God. Ask the Lord, Lord, ano gusto mo magawin sa akin? What do you want to change in me? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to decide on these things? Allow the Lord to talk to you because he, we got the vessel. We got the Spirit of Jesus in us. That is the channel of God that speaks to us. So every time that we do things, now we ask God, God, is this your will? God, will this give you glory? God, I submit to you. I obey you. If you love me, God is saying, obey me. And when This is the, the totality of, it's not really totality, but this is, you know, to glorify God is to extol His attributes, to exalt His character. His holiness, this is the character of God, His holiness, His faithfulness, mercy, grace, love, majesty, sovereignty, power, and omniscience, rehearsing them over and over in our minds. And telling others about the singular nature of the salvation only he offers. Salvation can only be found in Jesus Christ. Amen. And no one else. Only through Jesus Christ. This is to give glory. This is how to give glory to God. To meditate. To put it on our mind. His, his character. His attributes. His goodness to us. Because that one will guide our hearts. Will guide our mind. Our mind. Our God, hearts and mind. Yes. <laughs> so, and this is the plan to bring a glorious church. See, husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church. This is our purpose. One day, God will submit us to the Father as a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Why did husband and wives were used there? Because husband and wives symbolizes God and church. Pentinawag ang church the bride of Christ. Husband, love your wives. God as God loves the church. Because it's the purpose to cleanse the church being cleansed. Every day we're being transformed. Every day the glory of God is manifesting in our lives. To present us what? As a glorious church. That is the purpose of Jesus. And this is the promise. Moreover, whom he free understands, this he also called. Whom he called, this he also justified. And whom he justified, he also glorified. Amen. glorified we will be given a glorified body a glorious church conclusion when we die the bible calls it we are going to be received unto glory in heaven Amen. Amen. that is like to be received unto glory he will be taken into god's presence this is the, our destiny don't afraid to die we will be taken into God's presence, naturally surrounded by God's glory. A place where God's beauty. Can you imagine? This is our destiny. You will be surrounded with the beauty of God. You will be surrounded with the glory of God. And a place where God's beauty literally resides. The beauty of His Spirit will be there because He will be there. Again, the beauty of His Spirit or the essence of who He is, is His glory. In that place, his glory will not need to come through man or nature. Rather, it will be seen clearly just as he is. This is our destiny. To be in the presence of God. To be in the glory of God. To be with God forever. Amen.